Hold on. All right, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Conversation. You feel me? We got a lot to talk about tonight. We talking about the beef with Kendrick and uh, Drake. Shit going crazy right now. We going to get a lot of opinions. I got a couple uh, special guests on the panel. I got uh, Kai Zen. I got my aunt, my big uncle, Trey Forty. I got my homie from DF Dub, Divine on the track, my homie, my producer. We about to see what they talking about. Let's get it. What's going on? Well, what's up, family? It's all about money, man. What's they the need the word, money. Man. What's the word? What's going on with these beef, man? It's all about Come on, man. Let's all be real, man. I, I got first word. <laughs> Kendrick hit Drake with that they John Wick, you know what I'm saying? Went straight for the head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was not playing no games. <laughs> this nigga took out a whole family album and went through the entire family. <laughs> right, right, right. But you know, the mainstream rocking with Drake, they want to hit at that pop shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, they're trying to turn up, but lyricists are looking at like, nah, man, bar for bar, nah. Right. Kendrick got that all all day. Oh yeah, I was just thinking early. I'm like, man, who wrote that for Drake? Y'all think somebody wrote that for Drake? Hell yeah. Uh, yeah uh, nah. Hey, I'm yeah. like, man, I don't know, man. So I, mean, I think he might. What be you think? Man, we don't know what to believe with that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you don't know. You never know. <laughs> He a slick, he a slick ass nigga. You gotta watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real talk though, Drake was warned. Kendrick, he did say he had receipts. He was gonna come with it, and he took it there because Drake. A real Compton nigga, boy. You said right. Like that. Drake did a good, a solid seven, and Kendrick took it to eleven. You know what I'm saying? He went there, he took it the Kendrick extra mile. That nigga, like he was his dad. Damn, damn the body. <laughs> how do how, how you get this twice into being a better father? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you on? Date night? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, man. I was just left Navy Pier, man. Went on a little boat cruise in Chicago. I'm finna All get a little right. steak dinner and whatnot. All right, Sam, you busy, Sam. You can tap back in. Yeah, she like, go outside. You loud. You being ghetto. Yeah, I'll be all right. Kyle, what you think, fam? But yeah, you know how to tap in the one time now. You know. All right. All right, love, bro. Love, love. Yep. Yeah, what's going on, Kaizen? What's going on? What's good with you? What's good with you? on our first artist. One of the first artists. Let's get it. Let's get it correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how you feeling, man? What's up with the beef? What's going on? Man, I don't know. I don't know. I'm stuck, man. I think Drake got it, bro. It's been what? Four, four dish tracks total? Two from each? Uh, no, nah, uh, Kendrick got a total of three. Yeah. And Drake got uh, Drake got four. Yeah, push-ups, the uh, Taylor May. No, and this one. Made don't count. They deleted it. It don't count. So, so, so two and three because Drake got the first one with future. Or sorry, Drake. Uh, Kendrick got the first one with future, right? Yeah. Did he count that one? Four tracks, like four. Oh, four tracks. Then Kendrick's got two. Then this one and then the last one. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And this and this, so does Drake. Drake's got push-ups in this in this most recent one. But but this the thing. The most recent one ain't nothing but an extension of the of the first shit. But you got to realize, it, it is an extension, but he only said what the little PG line at the end of push-up. So it's not like he was really but this giving is y'all something. The whole like, track was recorded one night. So all he did was just chop off half. And he was like, if he come yeah, back, I'm going to yeah. That's all yeah. he did. Yep. Yeah. That made yeah, it was lazy. I mean, it was hard, but it was lazy. Kendrick came with a whole new idea. Whole new. <laughs> whole so Kendrick, new. Kendrick stayed up all night writing that one and said, you put me in the booth until tomorrow morning. We're going to get it. Right. <laughs> hey. Hey. Kendrick might have it. Kendrick might have Kendrick. it. I'm going really to put it like this. On a lyricist MC, real hip hop. Kids like one on one hip hop, Kendrick went on oh, the in the club type rapidy pop rap. Drake went true, true. Okay, how do you how do you think about equating it to like 
Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem. Like Machine Gun Kelly is kind of like Drake's diss, and then Kill Shot was kind of like what uh, Kendrick did. I ain't gonna lie, no disrespect. This ain't no racist shit. I can't no, not that. not on race. Like in terms of like lyrics, like on song, like you know, because even Rap Devil was on some like club, like you know, like, to me, to me, banging they shit. More, they more. Uh, they was more focused on straight bars, like MGK shit. We don't even know the hook. Like push us, we know the hook. Like you feel me? Drop, drop. You know that, right? Like, like a song now. <laughs> like Kendrick song, that first one, uh, Euphoria. That shit went like streams. It broke record. Right. True. So, I mean, Kendrick, I don't feel like Drake made his match. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. Maybe not on the hit-wise, but like far as like, ooh, low cut, low ball, like low punches to the gut. Yeah. Yeah, Kendrick. Kendrick said he got somebody on his team, on Drake's team, telling him this shit. Damn. Leaking information. True. Yeah, anyway, crazy. Got an inside informant. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but what do y'all think this is doing to to for the culture? Like, is it is it making music better? Is it making uh, more interesting? I think it's making it better. Niggas gotta come with bars now. Yeah, but also niggas gotta come with their own bars. True. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's the I, whole thing. I've been telling you that in the beginning. I was, I, we talked about that. Yeah, it's like you can't you can't be in a rap battle with somebody, uh, or beef with somebody like that, and not write your own stuff. Like like, and, that, and that's the kind of expectation. I think we all have the expectation. We all expect the. I mean, even though Drake may have ghostfires, we all expect the Drake to sit down in the booth and write his his I might his, his bars out to Drake. I might have to bring up this old clip of Drake at a. Uh freestyle and he the, he like the first freestyler to pull out his phone on the camera yeah i, I think i'm gonna have to pull this out this, this one here go right here i mean i mean damn near kendrick did what pusha t did to drake and, back when they beef i'm gonna have to we gonna have to go we gonna have to get big somebody gonna have to get big okay hold on hold on this is great y'all this y'all favorite y'all favorite guy right <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me pull out the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth came to prove a point tonight. Yeah, because everybody swear like Drake. Drake can't. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Look. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, he said, all the way from the grass. Now y'all see him with that phone in his hand. <laughs> yeah. He, he's yeah. literally freestyling with a phone in his hand. Blackberry. So y'all know this shit. Oh. Right. True. True. That's all y'all gonna see. I don't want them to copyright this shit. Nah, man. But hey, listen. He even just Wayne in the in the in his own track. <laughs> hey, bro. Like. As much as Wayne oh, did yeah, for you, Wayne, saying. yeah, you this Wayne. How you, how you, funny, how you bite the ass. fan to feed you? You know what I'm saying? Like, true. He's a funny ass dude, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't respect a lot of shit he do. I ain't gonna lie. Like on some man shit. Like forget the artist shit. That's some man shit. True. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of shit. That like, hey man, you could have handled your business differently. Nah, for <laughs> real, for real. That's true. But you know he's he thinking that now. And you know, you know, whenever the niggas losing the battle, they were like, "Damn, I wish I could handle that differently." <laughs> they were, they was, they were sitting contemplate like, "Damn." Like they even tried to say, uh, 
Kendrick stole from some battle rap artists. Oof. Oh, don't, don't, don't let that be true. <laughs> <laughs> don't let that be true. Hey, y'all, y'all niggas hate. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all hate. What you mean? I'm 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 I'm, Kend- I'm Kendrick winning this one for me. No, I would say like people, the people hate. Oh, people, the public. Oh yeah, the public capping. That shit, now that was some dumb shit, bro. True, true, true. Like for real, like I, I was gonna lie, this shows y'all, this show y'all like really what the game made of. It's full of fakes. It's full of fake friends. It's full of like it's just. It's just like think of this. Future made a whole album with this man. Now they beefing. True. Like some must not be right. They must just all work with Drake specifically to get the numbers, get his fan base. They must never like none of them. He must have been like a real goofy. They just like, hey, he gonna give you well, a hit. And well, at the end of the day, the music business is a business, so it may just been a business, you know, yeah. adventure. You know, like Drake Ross is going in on. That's yeah. I don't know. I think the people was fucking with I think they was fucking with him at first, but he probably did some goofy shit behind the scenes. I feel like what I feel like this. When Drake wasn't as big as the other artists he was working with, it was all good. But I feel like when he got the power, he he changed up. He started acting like he bigger than niggas. So so basically basically when you cross Swain. Yeah, like Wayne, bro. Like, how dare him, nigga? Yeah, I thought that was low key disrespectful. A real talk. I yeah, was... so I dare you, nigga. Like, you didn't, like, no disrespect. Uh, I feel like Rick Ross right now. White boy, you lost your mind. He took that shit trying to spin it like, like he was proud to be a white boy. Like, that DVL went to your head, man. Something like that, man. <laughs> Man. Real, like, okay, as far as like real hip hop artists, do, is this like a W for them, or this like, damn, this we still ain't there yet, or this is like Kendrick like bringing them up, like, nah, we own now. This was hot. The real hip hop was hot. Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think the real, right, the real hip hop community is um, excited and up right now because just of what of what Kendrick dropped. Because they they, they, gonna, they gonna respect the story and the, and the effort more. I, my only question is, and and forgive me for not knowing this, and this is gonna sound stupid on the on the air, but like not knowing the whole background story between Kendrick and, and Drake, and like not and like I'm, I'm basically my own, my question is is what or how much of what Kendrick said is true? I'm pre- I, I think most of it is, but I'm just I saying like true, bro. the way he was saying it, it sounded like right. It, it sounded like all, all of it was was yeah it was true. And saying like Drake was making up shit. I would keep it real. <laughs> I didn't believe none of that shit he was talking. I just like it was a good song, but I didn't feel no bars. I ain't feel them like Kendrick. I felt them. Like, oh, yeah, that shit hit. It hit a little. It hit different. It hit a little different. Like the tone of his voice was different. Like yeah. shit, sit down real quick, son. Let me talk to you. Real quick. <laughs> Then their intervention, right? Like an older uncle, bro. Like an older OG uncle talking to him. Like, man, you trip. <laughs> yeah. But like, but like, okay, what do this how do this how do this affect the youth, the new MC, the, the young, the teenage? Like, how do you think they look at it? Uh, they hype right now, but I, well, my my bigger question is, what Adonis and Drake's supposedly daughter gonna think about this? Because it's gonna be in that forever. Like they, like you know, they playing this whenever they get punished. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, I don't know. They, we could say the same for Kendrick though. His kids gonna hit. Yes, bro, that's he, true. I mean, Drake say, bro. What did he that really kid say? might be day freeze. Like. <laughs> Like all he said was uh your girl white nigga. That I mean bro, 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 bro. <laughs> he, said, he said Kendrick was Kendrick wife was sleeping with the bodyguard and the baby ain't Kendrick's bro come on like yeah that. but I, I'm sorry okay that, I'm sorry I'll keep it real as a man 
that shit is minor to what Kendrick said about Drake. Uh, like Drake is getting calls right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 like is really how they be talking in Canada. Hey, OVO, hey, you got a daughter? <laughs> you know, six guy got a daughter. Like, we, you are crazy. But Kendrick got to come with receipts after saying Bro, that. I ain't going to lie. The shit Kendrick said could get a hit put out on that list. Like, bro, like if Drake, like, like you got to come with the receipts that Drake got nigga, that Kendrick daughter. Kendrick came like Pac. Kendrick came like Pac was talking out that nigga. <laughs> like, real talk, bro. Like, he's summing some shit up. Like, <laughs> Kendrick got that voodoo, dog. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Boo, it's always them short niggas from the hood, too. <laughs> short niggas, you gotta watch, bro. Real hey, 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 niggas from the like hood. Kendrick, that, 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 boy Kendrick, that boy Kendrick turned into a real private investigator and went in and got, got some real dirt on that. On that, on that. It's a nigga standing right next to you. Bro, what if it's 40? That was. What if it's 40? Whoop is his right hand man. Your whole team wants you to fail. Damn. Right. Damn, but I was just, see, that's the thing. Drake can't say all that about Kendrick. Kendrick went like real personal, bro. True. More personal than push the T. I was just saying, he went for the head. Ah, Pusha T bodied that nigga to be in a better pair, low key, like real talk. Like he, <laughs> he said. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna push the team. Right, but Drake he he brushed that off somehow, some way. He brushed it off. Not this Kendrick shit. Push ain't big as Kendrick. Not right now. This shit hit a little different. It's like a hand maker. And, and Kendrick and, and Drake were closer in, in age, right? Than than, than Pusha and Drake. Cause Pusha closer to 50 years old. Yeah, uh, push up the. Push it though. I don't respect Pusha how he fell out with my boy Yay. That's another story though. Yeah, we get into that later. Yeah. Um, but but to your question, how's the youth feeling right now? Ah uh, man, I feel like like do this tell the youth like, hey man, y'all gotta battle it out. Y'all gotta take it back to that real day. Like fuck all the subliminal tweets, all the Instagram snubs, all oh, nigga, get on that mic. And sit some bars, but I mean. Lot, especially with these lot of young and new rappers, they ain't got the 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 lyrics or the, maybe the patience to sit and write like that, with the write like Kendrick and, and and to conjure up something that like Kendrick made. And so I I, I think the way that they, they beef in this is how they beef on them. That's just I guess it's just how it's gonna go. Whether it's online Twitter or or making you know catchy pop songs on TikTok, whatever, and, and you know how they go back at it. But hey, hey, hey. That, that's a that's a dying art. Before we continue, let's let's give a special thanks to all the mothers watching right now. Mother's Day on Monday. Hell yeah. Let's Amen. All the know. We appreciate God bless. It. You know, without them, we wouldn't be talking on this platform. So Hell yeah. True. Thank True. the mothers, the single mothers going through it right now that need help. Like let's 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 get them a roll, a warm welcoming round of applause, tip they had. Hey, God bless Queens. Yeah, my, sorry, my hat don't come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, God bless the Queens, man. You know what I'm saying? We, you're right. We, we're not here without them, so. Um, True. True. Yeah, well, man. Shout out, respect. <laughs> okay, like, check it out. Okay, all the people that's in this beef that they talking about, do y'all feel like, do y'all feel like, uh, what 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 is the point of no return? When should when should rap uh have the boundaries and have uh certain criteria like certain lines not to cross, or is it like fair game? I don't know. Because you gotta remember they talk about people wise, people baby mamas, people why like come on now. This shit I don't know. I'm sorry, was that repeat the question? I was saying like how do, you, how do you feel? <laughs> what you want with that? I ought to come inside, it's storming outside. <laughs> okay. I was saying I was, I was saying, how do you feel? Uh, when is it going too far on, on record? When it when is enough enough? That's a good question. Um I don't 
I think family has always kind of been always kind of like I, I think family and person has always kind of been like part of the boundary. I'm not I'm saying like is the concrete boundary like like like, like hard in the sand, but I do think it's you know definitely one of those things like hey, it's touching. Be careful because you know some people really don't play about the family, you know, and that's it cuts a little deep, especially you know especially if the family is in, that you're talking about is actually going through something. Kind of like when Nick, when, when Nikki's uh, brother was dealing with that uh, pedophilia lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I feel like it ain't it ain't no boundaries, but some shit like kids, like unborn kids and shit like that. You going a little too deep? Anybody yeah. who alive, cool. Like I feel like, yeah, that might be for a dead or like shit like that. Then you, then you kind of going a little overboard. I right? <laughs> no, I feel, right, I feel what you're like, saying. Like, like think about it. Like Nikki talking about uh, Megan dead mom. Like that ain't right, bro. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have to bring that up. And I, I think you're right. Like you know, uh, I I think hip hop has historically always been like you know it's like it's all like. Uh, no rules like anything anything's up for game and you know go as go as hard as you want um okay hold on hold on hold Hold that thought real quick speaking of that we about to take it to a whole nother topic what's y'all best diss track since we on diss tracks it's the the new era what is y'all best from all the eras what is y'all best most solid most grimiest ether kill shot Back to back is pretty good. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go hit him up. Hit him up. Hit him up. Yeah, hit him up was good. Yeah. Um. Uh. Adonis, the story of the Adnan by Pusha T was, was good. I really like that one. And then this new one by by Kendrick was fire to me. I ain't gonna lie, the Chris Brown this track. Chris Brown was was also fire. Wow, Chris. So, Brown, yeah, Chris yeah, he went he went in. Let's talk about that. We're I was going to bring that up because we was talking about the rules. Like, was he wrong for bringing up takeoff? Hold on, hold on. Gavin, you can't go to no quiet room. Go oh. All right, but, uh, you yeah, know, like I was saying, yeah, uh, Chris Brown, he, he did a little too much. He talked about the dead. But was he really? Cause he ain't this takeoff. At the end of the day, he just he said R.P. to takeoff. You the only one that really got true respect. It's crazy when he died. Everybody really wished it was you instead. Like he wasn't talking shit about takeoff. He was coming for Quavo, saying nigga, they should have got your ass out of here. Like, yeah, but you still bringing them up. It ain't it ain't been that long. Though. Yeah, they, they haven't grieved that like they haven't grieved that that long. Right. Yeah, right. I, I, I think. Wow, well, he, he always I, he, he, for the clickbait shit. I'm gonna keep it real. He, he didn't he didn't have to probably go that far. He didn't probably just say that, or he probably just said that in a different way. But he, I, 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 he wanted the best out. He wanted the yeah. greatest. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Fuck with CB. Do it just for just for like I don't know. T- I ain't gonna say attention, but yeah, maybe he was trying to do the proof of point. But I, I, I mean, Chris Brown, you got it, bro. I was gonna say like at the end of the day, niggas don't really know Breezy for rapping unless you a real fan. So he, him beefing with a rapper like that nigga had to come but with some Quavo, shit that was going to solidify Quavo a, it. Like, Quavo not a rap beef nigga. Yeah, he had a push of T type and he's not a, you know, he's not. He is strictly hit, strictly hook, strictly. He's a, like an artist. Like he go in and make music. He don't do True. the rap. True. Yeah. I still ain't heard none of his diss tracks, neither. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, no. Not one. Not one. I heard none of his shit. I'm just keep it. I only heard that Chris Brown shit on like shorts. I only heard that line. They just kept throwing that line. Nah, bro. Chris Brown, the goat, the meat for <laughs> that track was that track was wild. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't okay. expecting okay. him to come with that shit, bro. I got another good ass question. I'm gonna put it like this. Why do y'all think hip hop is the only genre of music where it's okay to beef and and belittle people and talk shit about people? And 
and all that? Um, is it just uh, is it just the culture? Like, what is it? I think historically, I think it's almost like a like a like a rite of passage, like to like a sign of respect type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, almost you gotta earn your you gotta earn your your respects in a way, and the the best lyricist wins. And it's not, it's, not, it's, not the only, it's not the only thing I believe, but I think it's part of it. I think it's almost like you almost have to um, prove yourself. Are you, are you are you worthy of it, of, of the mantle and of, of, that, of that title to call yourself that? Um, there's more I want to say, but my, my thoughts aren't clear. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I honestly feel like, you know, since hip hop, the origin, the beginnings of hip hop come from like streets and you know, hustlers, dope boys, whatever, whatever. Um, I feel like it is in the culture and it is, it is a, um, like you said, a rite of passage and it is a test to keep your armor sharp. That's how I feel. Armor, like in, uh, armor yeah, armor and your weapon. You ain't really that nigga till you took out a nigga. Right, right. Yeah, your armor and your weapon. So how much can you take and can you give it back? Sure. Um, if you, I mean, and it's, that's also proven in battle raps across um, across the nation and across the world. People who battle and not rapping lyric, lyric, bar for bar, they're always trying to one up each other. Who's got the hardest line? Who's who's this and who better or harder? And usually that's judged by the audience. And um, and like if you come out on top, you you, you know you kind of they kind of hats off to you. All right, man, respect. You beat me on that one. It's it's almost like. Uh, like I said, it's testing your your own ability, and sometimes like, even in games, like in game in general, like football, rather than sports, like sometimes um, you put it all out there, but sometimes that other team is just better than you, and you can't do you, you can give it all you can, you give it you know you got hundred percent, but sometimes you're just outmatched, you're outclassed, and that should push you to drive and do better. Um, but you know, if, once you once you are outclassed, and outmatched, you give you respects, sportsmanship, shake your hand, hey, good game, GG, my nigga, and keep it moving. True. Yeah, but I feel like hip hop not like that. Hip hop is, is is braggadocious. It's like, yeah, nigga, I had your girl. Yeah, nigga, I'm fresh with you. Yeah, to some, yeah, to some, yeah, to some extent, it's a dick swinging contest, and that that sucks because it's not. It shouldn't be that. Right. Well, that shouldn't be all like, of it. But you know what I mean. It's more like in hip hop, you ain't really staying true to the sport if you don't be a little like cocky. Right. Right. Because every, every rapper says they're the best. Every rapper think, or thinks they're the best. Right. Best to ever do it. And you got to have that, that aura. You got to have that persona. Like, can't no nobody Right. You feel me? Like, <laughs> right. any time, right. any day. Like, no matter what. Nigga, I'm the hottest nigga ever to do it. Right. If you, if you ain't coming like that in hip hop, they kind of think like, ah, oh, that nigga ain't shit. <laughs> You feel me? Like, if you I do feel it. Like, yeah. Like arrogant, like nah, that nigga must be trash. Yeah, or he ain't really mean it. Like nah, like yeah, yeah, he, he ain't about that life for real. He he ain't, yeah, he ain't about it, real. right? Yeah, true. Okay, but okay, put it. Okay, okay, I got another angle. Like I don't know how long y'all got, but we going in tonight. So I got another angle. Like okay, hip hop, right? Why, right. is it, why is it in hip hop we always want to see it go off wax to some violence to some murder to some shootouts why we always want to do that like what's that about like that's the this the only genre this shit even happens in i don't even know <laughs> uh, that's hard that's hard uh territory and back to respect thing and when you, when you yeah. people think you, you you're creeping on and put on, on their turf or, or yeah they're on the territory and they feel like they're being disrespected um it, it's 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 um assumed to be uh, a, a strength to go and defend yourself and stand up for uh what you believe in your own your territory your in your own respect as your own as, as an individual um but it does need to come to a point of like you know you need to pick your poison and choose the battle carefully because you don't want to fight a dragon that can take you out. But you, this you, all you, I'm you, saying though, this is what I'm saying. Like we got to really break this shit down tonight. Like why hip hop, the only genre? Think of it. Whitney Houston would never say, "I'm gonna shoot so and so. I'm gonna pop that nigga. I'm gonna smack his ass when I see him." Like Whitney Houston, Gerald LeVert, they would never do nothing like that. I mean, you gotta break it down, bro. Rap is mostly street. 
like a wannabe street niggas. So it's a thin line. Like you dealing with niggas who was really living that life. So, so and, not all, just, though. and oh, if you diss all. another nigga who was really living that life, if y'all was really about it, y'all would take it there. So right. And people like to see that shit. You feel me? These these, these rappers got fans. Yeah, they like fans to, picking sides. Yeah, they like to see that shit until it happens to them. Then it's like, oh my baby. <laughs> So it's right. like, oh yeah, it's shit, like, oh, this baby. nigga get popped, that nigga fans, then his music go up because he done died and his other nigga music go up because he the one that they killed him. It's just, it's like, it's like at the end of the day, it's the ignorance. And that, it, I feel like it ain't no rules with this shit, though. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's when cool. it was and in the streets, but they, the we don't play about that no more. And shit, like they'll keep the shit to the bars and shit. Right, I'm talking about right. with the street from the, I'm like about niggas wasn't killing niggas yeah. wasn't doing shit less the goddamn top dog said that shit. Niggas just running wild doing shit on their own nowadays. So I feel right. like I feel, like, I feel like back in the day. I feel like I feel like back in the day the real street guys, the real OGs, they were more off the scene. Now yeah. it's kind of in intertwined. So it's like it's mixed in with the shit. Yeah, but that's because it, think of it like chess. They they, uh, they were the, they were the kings, um, sitting in the bag and they had their pawns to carry out the work and the hits out for them. And so they would be hidden. They would you wouldn't see them. And so they had other people go do their dirty work for them. Um, what's that's the question? You know, why if, if if you're so gangster, why can't you take care of the hit yourself? But that's another story for another time. But um, I think that what it comes down to the answer to your question is uh, it comes down to vulnerability and weakness. You know, you're not you're not you're not supposed to show or show signs of weakness, vulnerability, uh, and, and you're not allowed to see you're not allowed to show others that you can bleed, and and that sucks because that, all, all, that almost makes you look weaker, uh, trying to prove that you can't bleed than just to take your hits like a man and you know, um, and move on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what do you got to say to the people like J Cole that's gonna back out? Uh, that's, uh, I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with uh, Cole, but that was a bitch move. <laughs> you can't, yeah, I fuck with Cole. You can't jump in the shit, then cop a plea, nigga. You. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of just the rap code, then. Yeah, I, 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 I rock with him. I, I fuck with him. I fuck with Cole. Um. Yeah. I respect and understand why he did it, but uh um, this is the thing though. What if what if what if what if the label hey we'll give you an extra woo woo? You did Cole, I mean Kendrick, and then he realized man, I don't want to do it. I don't think like, that's the point. Like that? I don't think the label because don't is he even signed? Don't that nigga got his own label? Yeah, like, yeah, he signed, nigga. All them niggas sign and come down to it. I mean, yeah. Right? But this the question. You think Cole the type of nigga to take a meal to diss a nigga? You think he'll do that shit? I mean, he didn't diss hella niggas before this. But I'm saying you think he was taking a bag for that shit? You think he was doing it because he really think he the best? Or you think that nigga was just picking getting a bag? <laughs> Collecting could be that a little bag bit of both. Could be a little bit of both, bro. Hey, 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 while we talking, hey, let's do a commercial break. Where your music at? You ready? Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's you ready? Let's, let's go do ahead. it. We're going to give you the spotlight. Hold on. Hold on, uh, Divine. We're going to get this man the spotlight. All right, Ben. Let me, let me get the speaker. Hold on. Let me grab the speaker real quick. Hey, cuz, don't forget to tell us the name, who produced it. Like, tell us about the song before you play it. All right, all right, all right. Like, break it down, break it down. The writing process, all that. Let us know. Let's get what you say again? Repeat that for me, cuz. I said break it down. Let us know the writing process. Why did you make this song? 
What's the meaning of the song? Uh, producer, right, right. so know, like a genius interview, on yeah, that. like a genius interview. Break all, it down. Right, all, right. Cool. all right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna start. Let's get a clue. That's the little hook to it. Uh, writing process, man. I don't even know. I just turn on the beat. And if I feel the beat, it just flow. For real, for real. Ain't too much to it. Like, uh, yeah, but meaning behind the hook, shit. Feel like I've been losing my soul. Niggas trying to kill me, that's why I stay strapped with a pole. Made a promise to mama that a nigga gonna make it home. So I'm up in this west and in this hollow's gonna bust your dome. Shit. Self-explanatory shit. You feel me? I'm a young dude out here. Been through a lot. You feel me? So at times it feel like I'm lost in this life. You feel me? Feel like I'm losing my soul. I'm just, I'm just out here floating, you feel? Me? And you feel me? Uh, laying at home, you feel me? Like I ain't no killer, I ain't. You feel? Me? I ain't no street man. I ain't on none of that. But I up that bitch to get on to my mama, man. Like at the end of the day, I rather see somebody else, mama, cry than see mine cry. Might be fucked up, but it is what it is. <laughs> Continue though. That's the little verse to it. Uh, first verse to it. Uh, damn, damn, kind of lost right here. Nah, uh, heartbroken nigga from the trenches. My mama say that I'm tripping. She want me off of the Addies, the Perky Zannies, and sipping. But I told her if I quit, then what the fuck gonna help the hell? You feel me? At a point in time in life, you started going through a lot. It was a lot going on. And uh, the people I was around with, they did certain drugs. And you feel me? I hopped into it. And uh, at the time of me writing this song, you feel me? That's how I felt. Like, if I ain't got these substances to cope with what the fuck I'm going through, what's going to help the healing? Well, in reality, it wasn't helping. But you feel me? Oh, that's the whole song? Nah, nah, nah. I'm trying right, to bring this shit down, bro. You feel first little interview, so I right, you feel me. I don't know how to do this for real. Hey man, but, it, be comfortable, man. No, just just act like it's us without the audience. Fuck, 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 fuck. Bet, bet, bet. All right. I'ma just replay the whole song and talk about the song. I'ma just play it front to back. That's how we gonna do it, man. And how I'ma do it. The song called Losing My Soul by my by the way. If y'all don't know. Dropping song probably tomorrow. Real talk. I've been losing 
Respect. That, yeah, respect. That was dope, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate Good work. When it's coming, though. When it's coming. At least you're going to drop it tomorrow. Likely tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow. I don't know when, but sometime tomorrow. YouTube, yeah, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. Yeah, we all do the uh, YouTube, SoundCloud as of tomorrow, but Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, everything else coming soon after. Coming soon after. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. But uh, man, like it's crazy, man. Like, it's so crazy. Like they saying. Spotify getting a hundred upload, hundred thousand uploads a day. That's crazy. Artists, new artists. All that new music. Everybody searching for the, the fifteen minutes of fame. I think, hey, that's a whole topic though. So let let's talk about that real. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that because that's what I'm saying. Like, hey, Spotify artists, yeah, y'all getting a raise by the way. Game up too. Everybody want to be a rapper nowadays. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's too much. It's too much supply, not enough demand. Uh, for one thing, um, and then the quality is, is just. I don't want to say shit. It's just it's just not as the quality of music is not as it was what it, what it was was what it once was. Is what yeah, I'm but to say. it's easier to make and it's less cost of it. Like it's less. Yeah, but, but again, but but that doesn't mean the quality holds up, and so. Yeah, when you when you make things like, accessible efficient, sometimes through. you lose their quality. It was just like anything, anything when you try to streamline a process like that. Um, there's to some degree the the, the quality suffers. Just like like okay, let me let me put that example or let me give you an example. Uh, McDonald's versus a, like a mom and pop burger shop. You know what I'm saying? The burger's not gonna be made as not be made as well with the quality and amount of like love, quote unquote, as something you get from as something you get from McDonald's, where it's just some quick, easy something to stick in your right. gut and go. You know what I'm saying? As no. to do, of course. But with the music, I wouldn't even necessarily say that. Because if you really trying to make a career with it, you got to put that bread to have the quality. 
I agree. So I, agree. I feel like if but, you but ain't honestly, really honestly, the brand no. for the quality, you just doing this shit for a quick check. Nah, no, honestly, you can't say that because look at Russ. It's people like Russ out. It's more Russes than people with the money. There's more people that's like spending but Russ was, shit. but you got to realize Russ was actively doing shit to further his shit. Like Russ was trying to learn how to engineer shit. A mm. lot of these niggas just going to their friends' basement and letting their friends engineer their shit, watching a YouTube video. Like Russ was actually putting in the work, trying. Like it took that nigga years. Like these niggas. Think they gonna blow in two months? Like that ain't how the shit go. Yeah, but at the same time, we gonna switch it again. Do you feel like these artists owe any any um words of encouragement, words of positivity to the youth? Do you feel it's their job to to to, to speak on to speak on? I mean yes and no yes and no pretty pretty much now i'm not saying i'm not saying they music i'm saying when they interview do you think somewhat slightly they have a responsibility to push a more positive message to the youth or negative yeah yeah i feel like honestly the youth listening to them right that's what i'm saying the artists, the influencers, the celebrities, they have so much influence over the kids. I feel like they being paid to do the exact opposite. Like, to guide them in the wrong way, to guide them in hey. you know, uh, rebellion. All, yeah. all, all division divides. Yeah. A crazy. lot of these new rappers is hard. young niggas. Yeah, but not all of them. You got the Benny, the Butchers, the Griseldas, all them. It's still all it's but still they, all that. they are trying to push a positive message though. Yeah, but the youth doesn't want to listen. They want to they want to because we're, we're in this world where we can do our own thing at any given time and and we're the most important thing in the world because we have the attention or we have the internet at our fingertips and so all the eyes are on us and that's not that's not the case. Um the thing I'm saying though. Sometimes, like, okay, 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 we got we got to push it to this. I wish I had a clip. I ain't got none of my clips ready. This is pop up episode. Y'all know I go, we go live Sundays, but let's get it. Let's speak on the thing like uh, Little Uzi Vert just recently did a show and he came out with makeup on the purse, hell, purse, like switching his hips like a female, feminine way. That's that. I don't know. Uh, no, nah, we, we, we can't. We can't support. Uh, uh D- that we can't. Was at the Diddy party. Yeah, yeah we at can't. The Diddy party, bro. Why are we supporting demasculization? Like, why is it now not okay to be a to be to have like masculine energy? Jesus Christ! I don't know. Hold on, hold on, divine. I'm just about to answer this, and we're gonna step into this. Why you said why is it demasculation? Why is that such a big issue today? You know why? Population control. Continue. Let's go. Damn. You gonna hit me, hit me with one of those? Oh man. We're taking it that night. It's Friday night. We don't give a damn. We don't give a damn. I'm gonna take it even further, bro. I'm gonna take it even further. Why all these men want to be bitches though? Like I just I don't get it. Like you know. I'm listening to it. So I'm gonna take the demasculation even further. It it it. It's not just happening. It's just happening to black people. Like, like if you let's be real. Like, yeah, you see goddamn white people, but the majority of niggas you see turning gay is black people. These Mexican dudes and what is oh, they trying oh, to? They shit. trying to eradicate us. Shit, you take the black man out of the household. Goddamn black people fail. Oh shit! Uh, I, I, I agree with that. The, the, the black the black man is important to the household, especially the black so, man for sure. So I'm. So you take that away, these kids ain't being raised. So now you can influence these kids. Okay. 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 But we haven't. We, we have it's, it's so it's been, it's been infidelity for at least the uh for the early part of the decade and like before. So before we were born, while we were born, it was kind of infidelity and kind of like the norm to kind of just. You know, sleep around. 
now it's transitioning to almost a demasculation of, of uh, the demasculation of not, not only the black men, just the men in general. So when are these ever, when are these kids always, uh, when are these kids um, ever had a strong masculine leader of the household that's been with them through like their, like they're all like their whole um, youth. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we, we have we have the NFL part, then we go into something else where it's like a, another attempt to remove them from the household. It's like, when we get to a period where we, we want to keep them in the house, <laughs> they actually want to stay and, and do and play their role. Right. But at the same time, all right, what we're talking about demasculization, the agendas getting pushed. Oh. Uh, at the same time, okay, okay, you said they want to take the black fathers out the household. At the same time, at the same time, what, what are the type of black fathers in the household? Are they actually, are they actually doing what they supposed to do? But well, then I was just about to say that, though. I was so just about to say, honest. you can't put it all on, you can't put it all, yeah, yeah. Just be honest. Are they going with the agendas getting pushed? Because once you get the head of the household, then you already know what's next. True. Like we're gonna start preaching. We gotta start preaching. How how is the household even being even being made? Like, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Wait, I, I, I don't understand the question. Is, what you mean? A what you mean? Is. Hold on, hold on, Devon. Break it down. What you want no, to say? Uh, what's the question? I don't, I don't think I understood the question. He said, he said black fathers out mm -hmm. of the household, which makes it easy for the rest of the family to get manipulated by the mass media, which I totally agree with. And he said that is the agenda. But I said, okay, let's break it down. Even if the some, some, not all black males, but a large percentage some some of them are being brainwashed and programmed by the mass media and they are going with you know what i'm saying are they even good in the household or as are they even leaders some of them not even like you know what i'm saying like nowadays the woman making more money like like let's be real but if let's go to why women making like i'm all for women right making money and all this shit, but let's go to why this shit is happening bro it's for the government to make more money at the end of the day yeah, at the end of the know. day it's for them to make more money bro because because well, more, more when women weren't thing. working bro only men was getting taxed america wasn't making as much money off the people as they was if women could work Right. So then they push women into the workplace, bro. And now women don't want to get married and they want to go have these careers, which is cool. But now they devalue men. Now men don't matter to these women. That's where the demasculation come right there. Right. Women feel like they don't need men. Right. So it's well, that's false. women not having kids. And now they in their 40s. And that's what that's what's fucking everything up if you're being honest with you. All right. But historically that's that's always been a premise. And that, well that's always been a premise in the sense of like um when men were when women were when women were out, out of the workforce, um men carried sixty, seventy, eighty percent of the burden to uh support the family financially and um and in other cases economically. So um um now, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, women can't have it both ways. They can't have a cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. I, I hear what you're saying, Devon. I hear what you're saying, uh Kaz, Kaz But this is what I'm saying. Okay, cool, cool. You know, women rights, equal rights, equal pay, you know, we got that going on. But at the same time, this is what I'm saying. What think about it real deep. What is the new the new um image for the new era of family is it even woman man child like let's just be honest we can go deep. but that's I, don't, I don't think i don't think it's clear i think it's unclear it's, it's, hey, that's that's where it's tricky bro this is where it get tricky because everybody got their different views and different opinion right so it's like from my perspective, right, like what is the family? 
Like, like what is the family like image? Yeah, what is the family image? getting pushed, bro. The family image right now is just, it's just distorted. And I don't think... Because if you take the... Even, just let's just take away black. If you take the man out of the household, shit fucked up the kids, now you can manipulate the kids easier because they daddy ain't there. It ain't a strict yeah. force. Like, it's shit that a dad is going to teach the son that a mama can't do. Right, I hear you. Agree. Point, but this is what I'm saying, like, though. This is what I'm saying. It's not even that no more. You talking about man, woman? Now it might be woman, woman, man, man. But that's oh, what I'm friend. saying. Like it's so much. I don't want to talk that crazy on these platforms, but you know what's going on. Like that's what it's I'm so saying. Much shit. Like that's what I'm saying. How is the the youth, the kids of all that? How they gonna grow up? You feel me? They're gonna think everything. Rudy, nigga. I mean, it's. They are they they ideas of things they they how they function how they you know what I'm saying how they look that's at why life. I say like I don't care world. like if you want to do what you want to do do it that's your life I feel like the shit get fucked up when they pushing this shit on the kids bro Disney openly sure, making sure. shows talk. shit it's Transformers got a bot that's got them. But uh, non gender, like the shit don't make sense. They pushing it on the kids, bro. Like that's, like, that's the first. Up. That's the first. That's the first people that the first uh, demographic they do push it on. It's easy. They impressionable. They minds ain't always, you know. True. I, I, it's not only that. I mean, it, 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 it is. It is some of that. Um, it's also they're the, they're the first consumers too. So of, of course they're gonna. Uh, the parents are gonna buy and consume whatever the the kids are into. Um, but I, I mean, maybe it's an agenda to, um, I mean, it's a, it's a false narrative that they're, they're pushing because, um, they're essentially saying you can be and do anything and, 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 and be anything at any given time. That's, that's, that's not true. So they're kind of disrupting their own self identity, which is, which is corrupt, which is kind of, it's, it's ripping their innocence. It, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's making them make decisions they're it, not supposed to make. It's, make, it's making their morals which like, distorts their self image. Like, like for instance, let's take it. Zaya Wade, I wouldn't have let that shit happen that fucking yeah, early. Of course, but that shit was an agenda. That's what I'm saying. Like, like they D, D Wade went on a whole press run. Like that's what I knew. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. And I might sound fucked up, but the Republicans talking about these laws to stop kids from being able to cut they and make these sex changes. I feel like you should be at least 18, 21. Of course. Nigga, if you can't drink, you can't make the decision to cut some shit off or change your gender, bro. You of not course. developed. Your brain ain't fully developed. Of but ki but, ki but kids have always been fluid. Like like you know, at, you know, at, at four they want to be a pirate, but then at, at, at seven they want to be a vampire, and at ten they want to be a transformers, and then at thirteen they want to be a race car driver. And so I'm saying kids are fluid and change their identity or what they aspire to be or what they what their interests are all the time. Um. And to to um, encourage or to suggest that they don't know themselves, they, they, no one knew, no one no one knew themselves at nine years old. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> no one knew themselves that that early, and and and, and were grounded in, in certain in certain um, in a certain uh, way to behave. So uh, you know, like. Yeah, you have time okay, to, look, look, look. We to can't figure that out. That. We can't. It's an hour. We just hit an hour. We cannot really go that deep on that. So I'm about to bring the show back. We're going to come uh, back. I'm about to do a right. quick commercial break. Take y'all off, man. All right, back. What's going on, y'all? This is Real Conversations Podcast. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, as well as all your audio platforms, Spotify. Amazon and wherever else you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcast, we all on there. Um, uh, you know, we trying to give y'all the best content with the best opinions from all angles. We not biased on this show. We're gonna keep it real at all times, and we're gonna stay real transparent with the audience. And we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Become a supporter. Support the uh, podcast. Be, become 
become one, man. We, we we stay dropping clips every week on the Instagram, and we stay giving y'all new content every weekend. Like, share, and subscribe, man. However y'all listening to this, we appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all time. Now back to the show. Yeah, what's going on? What's going on? We're going to take it to another topic, man. <laughs> We just got a little real deep. We got hella deep. Y'all gonna have to bring this back. <laughs> we know when we know when to start. We know when to stop. We know when to stay out. Cut the shit out. <laughs> uh, so do y'all think nowadays we're gonna go to the food? We're going to the food. Do y'all think nowadays it's better for us to start learning how to grow our own vegetables? Yes. And, and feeding ourselves rather than depending a hundred percent on the grocery stores. Yes. Yes. I, I, I think, I think gardening is a, is a lost art that, um, that everyone, everyone should have the opportunity to learn how to do it if they want to learn how to do it. So if they don't, if they don't care for it, then that's that. And that is, is what it is. But like for, for, for the people who, for the people who want to, uh, garden and learn myself included, uh yeah i think people should have the right to be able to grow their own food whether it's in the backyard or own some land to do it or whatever um yeah food that comes naturally from the earth from the ground is important i, I like to have that and rather than have my steaks made in the lab <laughs> hey, of course i totally agree with you but i feel like at this point in time and age we have got too addicted to convenience even myself included i'm not excluding myself oh yeah convenience is a problem yeah. Convenience is what is changing our whole lives the way we know it. Like convenience is Uber because easy. Yeah, no one wants to put yeah, yeah no one wants to put in the work. Like like no like no one wants to come at home and spend two hours prepping dinner or or, or, or less. And usually, usually it's an hour depending on, on the meal. But no one wants to come home and, and, and cook or shut corn or cut cut the steaks up or cut yeah. cut the chicken breast and and saute the uh, the onions in the in, in the pan. Like, like and then obviously the cleaning aspect afterwards. Like no one's the time it takes and that's what it is we're trading time we're, we're all about how we trade time and, we're, and it's on convenience okay so no think about it we don't have time for nothing no more right but 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 our need to consume hours of content or whatever is taken away from our um our behaviors and being at home our, our, our traditional behaviors and being at home cooking food prepping the food spending time with kids etc um there's a need to always watch the hottest thing or have the latest shoes or, or to, or to be constantly be shopping or constantly follow uh, whoever and to hear what the latest trends are is just uh, to some degrees just disrupting um, the need to have uh, deeper level conversations like this um, at the dinner table or just um, in public and with people or just to, um, just kind of connect like on a, a personal level with people. So um, a, lot, a lot of distractions in the world, man, a lot of distractions in the world. Yeah, it's a lot of distractions because at the same time, we in the age of information. So if we all just sit back and really do research. Yeah, not all information is good or correct information, too. So we can't have all this information out there, but yeah, we got to become all, the better filters. All information can get fact checked. So I'm just saying. To some degree. Have to, we have to be grateful that our ancestors put in the work and the real work. Now we really we really can reap a lot of benefits our ancestors walked so we can run. Like it's right. a lot of things we don't have to even leave a house for. Like it's a lot of things to be so grateful for in the daytime. Like even a broke man should be thankful. You can go to Starbucks, get Wi-Fi, create a website, get a million dollars. I think we jump into a few hoops there, but yeah, I mean, I, I, see, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. yeah. True. Like I once, I once seen something that said, uh, if Shakespeare or somebody like in that time would read a newspaper or something about today, like it'll blow their mind. Like you feel me? They're down there faint. Like nah, this shit fake. You know, what I mean? like this, it'll never be like this. True. Like for real. Like they would never thought it'd come this far. Like, think it. Come on, think if people like Harriet Tubman, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, like. So many creators, so many like even people like Elvis and all them other like they never thought should it be this big. Like the whole entertainment, th like we entertaining right now. Like you feel me? Facts. 
Yeah. Like this can <laughs> took over the whole world. Like people learn like this. People go to YouTube and Google and learn a, like some information that took people like months to learn from a class and shit. Yeah. Like the whole game is different. I was just talking to my auntie. She talking about she about to retire. She don't know what she going to do. I'm like, the game's so different now, auntie. You can you can actually set up a course on everything you know and sell that course. Like the game is so different now to where it's like, it's scary different. It's in your hands for real. Really? Yeah. It's in the it's in the it's in the it's in the person's hands. Like even I'm talking like this shit so crazy. Like even like the handicap, everybody getting like his internet then took over. I have a question for you on, on that topic of like, you know, I guess retirement and you know, working for yourself and whatever. Do y'all think that um uh, that be your own boss, uh, working on your own schedule, um, working for yourself. Do you think that's all a scam, a lie? Because it feels nah, like, like, nah. like, like, do you think that's like in a way to, to keep you always working? Be no. your own boss. Yeah. Because mm. I, I always tell, I yes always tell you, appreciate no. that. Yes and no. Because I feel like <laughs> at the end of the day, if you want financial freedom, you want to live the life you truly want, you going to have to put in that work and work all them hours. Or you settling thing, for though. a life of... Uh, like, this the thing people don't realize, though. Like, your job... Like, you are the boss, the CEO of you. You yeah. are... You are a business. You are a, uh, a company. You got to treat yourself, your self, your person, your name. You got to treat yourself as if the employer you're working for, y'all just have a timed contract to where y'all yeah. are going to, you're going to do something for the employer and he's going to pay, the company's going to pay you, you know, a certain amount and whatever, whatever. You got to look at it like that. Like, my little brother, I'll be having to talk to him. He's going through it right now. He he, you know what I'm saying? He don't like the, the, the workforce. He's saying it, it's all a scam. It's all a scheme. I'm like, but at the same time, in this country, you have to have some type of paperwork. Or if the people, you know what I'm saying? It's just going to tie you up. It's going to make you like. I told cuz this too, bro. It's going to make you not like, I ain't trying to call brother out or whatever. I love him. I'm just saying in general, the young, his age group in general. I, I think what. One, yeah. of things that, well, one of the things that would, that would help them or help help kids in the situation is, is to have a way out. That, that, that way they can give them some more leverage and negotiating power. Um, they just got to yeah. see it to believe it. That's all these, these kids are about. They just got to see this shit. They all about visual. We was the same way, shit. I mean, all kids like that, you got to literally show them for them to realize, like, oh, this shit real. True. But all shit that gets shown, that don't mean it's real neither. Because nowadays with the Airbnbs, the Toros, you can live that life without living that life. And that's what I was going to say. Like, the internet then just, mm-hmm. right? Like, when, when, when my mama used to be like, it's that damn phone. It really is to an extent, bro. Because it's like, everybody can post the good shit and hide what they really going through. Bro, yeah. post a picture and some Balenciaga sneakers, but he walk into the bus stop in them Balenciaga. All right. Bro, got no pay his rent. Bro, 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 driving a uh, Benz, but it's his baby mama's for real. Like, yeah, that's but that's the that's that illusion. Damn. Of that's how this shit go. Like that's what it is. So I feel like I feel like people would have to get back to having genuine in-person conversations, meetups type it for because you can't really tell through the internet. Yeah. You gotta see it. You gotta see it up close, huh? You feel me? Like I could I could see a nigga on Instagram like he popping this shit, but if you ain't do if you can't show me that in real life, bro, what, what we talking about? All right. Yeah, I don't know how it go, man. I 
that's how the, that's how the whole world is though like everybody got some tricks up their sleeve true True. Hell, man. Everything out here mainly be smoking mirrors. I'm talking about Instagram, whatever. Even in real life, if you see a nigga with it, it still might not be here. True. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, but anything, yeah, like we been on here down there. Hour and fifteen minutes. Anything else y'all want to say? What's going on? Let the people know where to find y'all. What's up? She be out saying some stuff for next time. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. we, we break it all down tonight. Right. We gotta do our <laughs> I tried to wait on a few people, but they ain't show. I'm about to end this shit. Right. Sounds good. We'll, we'll catch you next weekend. All right. For sure. For sure. Divine, you want something to say? Anything new coming out? What's going on? Uh, yeah, actually, I got inspired earlier this week. Um, so, finally cracked open FL. And so, hopefully, uh, at least we'll have one song done by 2024. Hey, cuz, he produced a lot of my first tape. Okay. Like, I'm going to have to lock in with you, man, for yeah. sure. Hey, appreciate that, man. Hey, pleasure meeting you, man. Yes, sir. Same, same. For sure. All right, that, Divine. We're going to see you. Love, man. All right, fam. Y'all be good, man. Likewise. Yes, sir. Good. What you got to say, man? Man, you know, losing my soul, coming tomorrow, hitting the stool tomorrow. 2024, we coming with the hits, man. 2024, we... Hey, 2024, uh, uh, the reawakening for me, that's what I call it, man. We, we coming back. I'm coming stronger than I ever have. You feel me? Uh, that's pretty much it, man. I'd be looking for these hits, cause I'm flooding, I'm flooding the scene all 2024 and for the rest of time. You feel? All right, for sure, love, man. Let yes, know sir. Long time, let know where to find. Uh, find me on Instagram, Zen in Motion, X E N, you know, and uh. Uh, Facebook, Kyle Williams, Apple Music, Kazan, SoundCloud, yeah, Kazan. Yeah, get the podcast a shout out for you, Lee. Yes, sir. And shout out to the podcast. Shout out to Cud. Yeah. Doing great things with this podcast, man. And we most definitely finna go up. We going up all 2024 and for the rest of the time. If it ain't boss status, it ain't right. You heard it. All right, look, uh, we're going to holler at you. Yes, sir. Sir. Hey, y'all have it, man. Another episode of Real, Real Conversations, man. Tap me in. Today's news It's the title of this episode. Appreciate all the special guests showing up, showing out. Y'all know rocking with me for this hour. Appreciate y'all, whoever going to look at the playback. Y'all know, man, subscribe to the YouTube Look us up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all audio platforms. We love y'all. We out. Shout out Dad Gang. I'm going to cop y'all some Dad Gang merch, man. It's for all the dads out there, man. Happy Mother's Day as well. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We out, man. Till next time. Love. Till next time.